Hello everybody, um, so I'm going to walk you guys through Dark Souls Animation Studio for a little bit. Um, that way you kind of understand what you're getting into when you're um, learning how to um, edit animations for uh, Elden Ring. So Dark Souls Animation Studio is a tool that's made by Meow Meredis. Um, great tool. Uh, it's five dollars in Patreon. Um, there might be a free edition, but I'm unsure at the moment. Anyhow, um, I suggest that uh, before you even open Dark Souls Animation Studio, I suggest we go to Files and we go to the Mod Engine folder that you're using. You should be using one, just say no. And make a folder, character, and we're going to use um, the Anabine file for oh, uh, uh, we're going to use the antibody file for the player so to kind of explain everything from scratch before you even did too deep um, there's a few file formats that you should be aware of there's antibind which is the package file containing all the animations and tape files um, and then there's other antibine files for this where it only contains animations so right now we're going to use c000 which is the player's antibine file mod engine is uh, really key to this so that way you don't mess with the original game files um, so let's go to Dark Souls Animation Studio and let's jump right into it. You'll see a splash screen and then you'll see nothing at all. And the next thing you want to do is go to File, Open. Go to your Mod Engine folder. We're going to open the Antibine file. And then it's going to prompt you asking um, what your game directory is and what your Mod Engine folder directory is. So for game directory, click browse, go to your game folder, save. For mod engine mod directory, go to browse, go to the mod engine folder that you're editing. You don't have to go all the way here. Just go to the mod engine folder and save that. And then I highly recommend that you unpack your game. That way you can actually edit everything in the original game files. Well, you're not going to edit the original game files, but you're going to utilize these um, instead of leaving it packaged. Um, and then if you do unpack it, I would use load UXM unpack game files. So make sure that's checked off and click apply. And it's going to load a few things and then it's going to ask me what model I want. So the model of course for the player is C0000. Click OK. It's going to load other stuff. Kind of let it do its thing. Make sure everything's loaded before you start messing with it. And let's make this full screen so it's easier to see what's going on. So right off the bat, we can close this. And I suggest just so it's easier to read, go to Edit, Collapse All Taste Sections. That way you're not overwhelmed with 5 million animation files on the left-hand side. To give you an idea of the UI, the left hand side is all the tape files and in each tape file or tape folder however you want to phrase it is a bunch of animations that the tape is editing so when you're editing an animation here to an extent you can swap animation files but the main thing that you're editing is the tape file to make sure you understand the tape files what tells the animation what to do it dictates what the animation does in the game so for example the tape file can tell the animation to deal damage to an enemy it can tell the animation to initiate a special effect initiate sfx etc and then the animation file is just the animation file let's uh disable sounds um just for now um 
if I can. I don't think I've ever done this. Do -do -do simulation sound effects. There you go. I don't want to uh, have a bunch of loud sounds going on while I'm talking. Um, so yeah, I, I just wanted to make that clear. So the tape file is not the animation itself. Um, the tape file um, helps the game understand what to use this animation for, basically. And going back to where I was, um, the middle here, you can call this your timeline. You can drag up here to scroll across your timeline. If you've ever used anything like Adobe Premiere, it's very similar. All of these are called events. And then on the right hand side, you'll have the preview window. You can hold left click to rotate. You can hold right click to pan and middle click to reset your view. And you can zoom out with the scroll wheel. Um, and then on the bottom right hand side, you're gonna have the parameters for each event. So for example, if I click set turn speed, it's gonna let me adjust the parameters for that particular event. So let's talk about editing and animation itself. So let's go to ACOTLT. This is going to be most of the basic player animations, such as dodging, walking, running, sprinting, backstepping, using something, etc., etc. Um, so. If you want to follow along with me, we can scroll down until we see uh, 19,600. And this is going to be an animation of somebody backstepping with the shield. Um, by the way, your preview is probably not going to look like this by default. Um, I have something called dummy polys open. Uh, I'll, go over, I'll go over that uh, briefly with you in a bit. Um, let's turn those off just so it's easier to see. There you go. Um, and let's just watch it. Let's press space and like loop. And you can kind of get an idea of what's happening. So there's a whole lot of events happening every time I do that back step. Going over each event would be on the more advanced side of things. So I'm going to uh, save that for later. Um, but let's do something like, let's make it play in slow motion. So if we want to make a new event, we can just shift right click. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. I got a new keyboard, so I'm not sure how to delete button works on this. Uh, feel like a moron. Uh, Wow. Okay. Well, until I figure this new keyboard out, I'm going to just move that outside the animation. Um, so the new jump table by default is going to say do nothing. Um, and if we want to change the event, we can go on the right hand side here and just click change. And if you want to follow along, let's go to 600 and I believe eight. Or something called animation speed gradient. It's going to give us two parameters the speed at the start of the animation and the speed at the end of it. So let's do 0 0.01, 0 0.5. It doesn't really matter if you're just messing around. So it should start off really slow and speed up to half the original speed. So there's nothing really fancy about it. Just editing the speed of the animation. And if we want to edit it, like officially modify the animation, the TAE file, go to file, save. 
And I highly recommend that you have something called Forcing Game Entity Reload on Save On. That way, every time you press Control S, it'll reload the character in the game. So let's just uh, go ahead and launch the game with Mod Engine. I'm going to turn it down so it doesn't blow your ear drums out. Alright. So that animation is me back stepping with the shield up. So to test it out i'm just gonna hold the shield up and oh yeah slow motion so let's do some other stuff let's uh mess with it in other ways uh, i'm not gonna go over all the possibilities i'm just kind of orienting you around this uh tool but real quick let's try something called uh spawn one shot ffx and this is going to be one of the most common ffx events in the game and if you're unaware ffx is basically um animation effects such as explosions magical particles etc etc and i'm going to use one um i'm using a spreadsheet on my other monitor right now i'm going to use one from the ruins great sword I'm going to copy the ID and put it in FFX ID. Now in the next row, you're going to notice something that you might not have heard of. It's called dummy poly ID. When you spawn something in a tape file or in game, it's often going to refer to something called a dummy poly, which is a location on the model that the tape file is going to use to spawn something. So if we want to see all of them right off the bat, we can go to Scene Explorer and click Dummy Poly. And you can see how many there are. The arrow direction indicates what direction the animation is going to face when it spawns. And if you want to see all the IDs, click Dummy Poly IDs. This is a good way to kind of orient yourself and kind of know the main Dummy Poly IDs. Um, and then Let's just uncheck those so you can kind of see what's going on again. I'm going to use one called 901, which is the right hand. This one's pretty commonly used. And then another thing you'll see is ignore dummy poly angle, follow dummy poly, restrict to dummy poly. Ignore dummy poly angle is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to ignore this arrow's direction and it's going to spawn the effect in the default direction follow dummy poly means it's going to follow my hand restrict the dummy poly means when the dummy poly goes away like it's no longer being utilized that animation is going to go away as well sometimes you need to use this because you'll spawn uh an effect and it just never goes away no matter what you do until you vest in grace or you reload your character so sometimes that's necessary. We're going to do is follow dummy poly and is restrict to dummy poly. And let's not worry about the other stuff right now. And make sure hoisting game entity reload on save is on. Click the timeline and press control S. And it'll save a quest game to reload character. And if you want to know if it works for sure, you can press control S. And you'll notice your character goes away and comes back. That's how you kind of confirm that it's working. So if I hold this shield up and I do the back step, you'll notice this. It's spawning an effect from the ruins great sword. Sometimes FFXs can include sound effects, which is what this is doing.
and I sometimes it doesn't work but if I click on it and I uncheck restrict the dummy poly that uh, those vox should never go away uh, it looks like by default the animation goes away it depends on which animation or effect that you're using um, and this is basically the gist of Dark Souls Animation Studio. Um, I'll be making a few more videos regarding how to do more advanced stuff. But this is what you should need to know in order to kind of orient yourself, play around with it, mess around with it, and kind of learn what all this tool can do. It's a really powerful tool, so I really recommend you use this if you ever get into modding. So uh, thank you guys, and until next time.